some astrophotographers always seem to be in the right place at the right time. How do they know? Let's talk about planning. I'll show you how I prepare for my subject, location and weather conditions and the information sources I rely on. Welcome back to the channel. This is Starscaper. The first thing you need to plan for is of course your subject. What do you want to photograph and when will it be available in the night sky? For example, uh, are you after the Milky Way core? Well, it's not always available and when it is above the horizon, it's not always in the same place at the same time. I use mainly uh, two sources to plan for my subject and that is uh, Stellarium and Photopills. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is a Stellarium and uh, you can see uh, that it represents the whole night sky at the moment. And the beauty is that you can uh, just uh, yeah, scroll forward in time or backward in time to the moment you want to see what's in the night sky, uh, uh, where in the night sky. So in this case, uh, we can see uh, that there is a nearly full moon in the sky, for example. Um, and you can drag the time and you can see all the stars moving yeah, for Orion here. Uh, moves from the south to the west where it's setting. Yeah, you can also turn on or off the constellations and the azimuthal grid uh, to see uh, how high or low something is in the sky. You can zoom in a lot here, for example on the uh, nice nebulae in Orion, which I will definitely, definitely photograph later. Um, yeah, so this is basically where I check what's in the night sky at which uh, moment. So at the moment it's not good because there's a moon here. Uh, but uh, if we scroll forward a couple of days, we can see the moon here is coming up uh, later and later and later and from around next week we have uh, some truly dark skies again so I can go out. Another source uh, which I use pretty often is the app called Photopills. I think it costs around uh, 10 euros, 10 dollars but uh, it's extremely worth it. There's uh, actually a lot of information uh, into Photopills but there are a couple of things uh, I use uh, quite often. And the first thing uh, in, if you come in the main menu here is the planner. And uh, in the planner you can see a sort of Google Maps uh, satellite imagery overlay. And if we uh, yeah, uh, go to a location I've shot a couple of weeks ago uh, at the Dutch coast, you can just hold your finger and put a pin everywhere in the world on a map. And at the bottom you have a timeline and you can uh, yeah, drag the timeline further. Uh, for example, right now you can see that it will be dark uh, around 7 o'clock. And uh, there's also some dots uh, overlaying. If you slide it, you can see that the dots are moving and the dots uh, represent the Milky Way. So you can see a little bit later from around uh, 10 o'clock, uh, the Milky Way uh, will be lined up pretty nicely uh, to the left of the jetty and later in the night it will be a parallel at the jetty so there you can have a really good idea of how the milky way moves and there are also uh, some other lines on this map uh, the orange line for example which you see here is the sun which is setting there and the blue line is uh, the moon so you can see that the moon is rising at um, around five o'clock uh, in the almost opposite direction of the milky way so that's the first thing uh, I use quite a lot. You can also save this, these plans so you can plan ahead into the future. Um, another thing I use is uh, the night artificial reality. And uh, I'll show you a short clip where I use this on location, but basically uh, you can move it around and you, can't, uh, you can just see uh, in your composition live where the Milky Way will line up. So you can plan your composition pretty well. So yeah, photo pills, really worth it, I think, really good app. So now that you know exactly what you are going to photograph in the night sky, uh, you need to consider location. Where are you going to shoot it? And if I think about location, there are a couple of things you can consider. Uh, the first, of course, is light pollution. And for the subjects you, uh, you are shooting, you probably need dark skies. And the second thing to think about is composition. 
It's nice, of course, uh, to photograph a starry sky, but what are you going to put under those stars? And the third thing uh, to look into is uh, yeah, some other practical on-location stuff. Well, you probably want to photograph from as dark as a location as you can uh, reach. And for that, I uh, use a website called lightpollutionmap.info. Let's uh, take a look at the screen again. There it is. Uh, and lightpollutionmap.info shows you a map uh, around the whole world uh, and the colors uh, represent how much light pollution there is. So uh, red and uh, yeah, this almost white zones are very bad. So you can see I live in the Netherlands, which is not very good. <laughs> but there are some pockets of less light pollution available uh, here around in the middle or in the north of the country. Um, for example, uh, a couple of weeks ago when I went to the Dutch coast, uh, I went to photograph the jetty and I looked for a location which had uh, not too much light pollution to the west. So I came uh, to the Dutch coast somewhere around here and you can see if we look to the west that uh, the light pollution is uh, yeah, not too bad at all. So yeah, uh, a very good source uh, to look for a, a yeah, broad area where you are shooting for, from. Now you know some dark locations, uh, but a dark location alone is not all you need to make a good photograph, I think. Although um, shots with only stars are pretty nice, I think a really strong photo also needs a good composition. And composition is about uh, subject matter besides the stars uh, and how you place those elements in your image. And so for example, if you found a nice tree or a nice house uh, or a nice uh, cliff on the sea, uh, how do you um, complement these elements in your photo and how do they work together? You can use uh, the rule of thirds to create balance in your photo, for example, uh, and you can also use uh, leading lines like paths uh, to create depth. Um, yeah, to look for uh, compositional ideas, extra subjects, we're going uh, to dive deeper into Google Maps. In Google Maps, I uh, zoom in a bit further to get some clues about uh, yeah, potential compositions, just to check if an area might be interesting. And let's uh, take the example uh, of the Dutch coast again. Uh, I go to Google Maps and I normally put on the, uh, uh, not the terrain, but the satellite image. And then, yeah, there it is. <laughs> My computer is pretty slow at the moment. Um, I've chosen a location somewhere around the Dutch coast. Um, I've actually been here before, but uh, for the example, I know uh, normally I would just uh, yeah, zoom in very closely and then I'll check for possible landmarks. For example, this jetty. And if I click there, there are actually some photos available from the area so I know uh, what to uh, what to expect and here you can see some photos and uh, I also see that there is a parking spot available it's not that far walking and uh, usually around those landmarks there are also uh, some uh, images available which uh, people uh, made there there where you can drop your uh, where you can drop your uh, mouse and here you can see a 360 of how the location looks like uh, during daytime so you know what to expect and yeah this will make for a pretty good photograph I think. Um, so yeah that's basically how I use uh, Google Maps um, and so zoom in around an area uh, check for uh, interesting landmarks uh, possible compositions and uh, also some practical stuff. But nothing beats doing some good old groundwork yourself. Uh, I really advise you just to go uh, to your potential shooting location during the day and just take a walk and see what you see. I bet you can find compositions you wouldn't have found in the dark. And last thing I always look for uh, when I don't know the location where I'm shooting yet is what I call um, other on location practical stuff. <laughs> Uh, for example, where can you park your car? Uh, can you even park your car somewhere if you are in the middle of nature? You will probably have to walk a bit. Uh, how far is the walk? Uh, is the walk dangerous? Are there uh, potential uh, uh, cliff edges, for example, or holes in the ground which you have uh, to pay special attention to? Those things you uh, basically only see if you have scouted the location during daytime. 
And also, are there other uh, yeah, unexpected difficulties uh, for the shoot? Uh, for example, when I was in France uh, with Martijn, we scouted the location uh, where there was a windmill, which made a beautiful subject. But when we were on location, we saw that there were uh, yeah, pretty harsh spotlights po pointed at the mill. So that wasn't good at all. But because we were scouting, we talked to the reception there and they told us that the lights would go off after about 11 o'clock. So by scouting the area, uh, we knew that it would be a pretty good shooting location at night after all. Okay, so you have chosen your subject and you have found a good location to shoot it in. The last thing to consider, but definitely not the least, is weather conditions. Uh, Oftentimes uh, clouds, for example, can get in the way of your astro shots, uh, but also uh, the humidity in the air is an important factor. Eh? Um, if there's fog in the air, uh, it will definitely impact your end result and it will also impact your equipment, for example. So you have to think about it. And a thing I oftentimes forget to double check is also the wind, because the stronger the wind is, the, uh, the higher the chance that your uh, photos will not be sharp, especially if you are making long exposures on a star tracker for example. So let's take a look at the sources I use to plan for the weather. There are different weather models available and uh, yeah, various apps and sources use different weather models to calculate the forecast and sometimes they uh, mostly agree with each other but uh, more often than not, uh, different models contradict each other. Um, yeah, so you are looking uh, for a night uh, where preferably a lot of the weather models uh, predict clear skies with not too much humidity in the air and not too much wind. And uh, the sources I use are uh, clear outside. Uh, I also have an app uh, which is called uh, Weather Pro. Uh, I also use an app uh, Weather and Radar, basically for the radar, but also the forecast is pretty good and also windy. Uh, I'll start by showing you uh, clear outside and therefore I'll have to uh, start the screen recording and go to clear outside. Clear outside also has an app available, but I like the interface of the website just a bit more. So here is uh, clear outside uh, you can uh, look your uh, potential photo spot. Uh, for example, I shot at Patton uh, lately and it's loading now uh, the forecast for Patton. And if you just uh, look to the overview, you see um, every hour gets a color. It's red, it's orange, or it is green. And this is especially made for, astro, uh, for astronomers. Um, and it means if a, uh, an hour is green, it is probably good for astrophotography. Uh, if you uh, see here, for example, the Friday looks pretty good. If we uh, click on that arrow, uh, you see a lot of information available uh, why this is actually green. And the most interesting thing I think about uh, Clear Outside is that it doesn't uh, show you only uh, one cloud cover, but it uh, divides it in different cloud layers. Eh? You have uh, low clouds, you have medium clouds, and you also have high clouds. So you yeah, get more of an idea what's going on. Eh? Just a bit of high cloud in the sky sometimes gives you a, uh, a nice uh, haze effect, for example. But uh, yeah, basically uh, you want these uh, all these layers as far to zero as possible for astrophotography. And it also uh, shows you uh, the visibility, if there's any chance of fog, uh, the wind direction and the wind speed, and also the temperatures. And what's also very handy is the dew point and the relative humidity. Uh, in my experience, if the humidity goes above 90%, and you also see that it goes uh, red here, uh, then you have, have a good chance that there will be some ground fog. And if you leave your equipment longer outside, uh, your lens will fog up uh, and they will uh, form some mist on your lens. And you can use geo heaters, for example, um, uh, to counteract that effect. Uh, but it's good to know beforehand. Another source I use is uh, Windy. Uh, Windy also has an app available and a website. I'll show you the website. But uh, the beautiful thing about Windy and the unique thing about Windy, I think, is uh, that you can select the different weather models. So you can compare them in one interface. So let's take a look at Windy. I'll start the recording. 
So this is windy um, and you can see it is mainly focused on wind. <laughs> And there are, is a menu here at the right and if you click clouds, which is mostly the most important one for us astrophotographers, you can see the cloud base here and uh, you can also see it uh, a couple of hours back and you can also see it uh, predicted. And so it moves around a bit and if you uh, click uh, here, uh, uh, here at the bottom, you can see different weather models. So uh, Tuesday 9 o'clock, it shows that there are some small gaps in the middle of the Netherlands uh, according to this model. And if we choose GFS, let's see what that says. It shows it is mostly overcast, but some small gaps perhaps. And the, another weather model predicts even more clouds. So there you can compare them. So I know for tonight there's a moon out, but if there wasn't a moon out, I uh, know pretty sure that there will be too much clouds uh, to go out photographing. Two other apps I like to use uh, for the weather forecast are uh, Weather Pro and Weather and Radar. Uh, I'll show you Weather Pro first. Um, it actually has a um, monthly fee which I pay for so that I can see it uh, for every hour but there's also a free version available where it uh, forecasts for every three hours or something I think. Uh, and this is Weather Pro and you can see uh, for today for example you can zoom in and it shows you an overview of the weather situation for every hour. Uh, it also shows uh, a 14 days prediction, uh, typical uh, Dutch weather as you can see. Um, yeah pretty good and often pretty reliable. And the last app I use uh, a lot of the time is Weather and Radar. This is a uh, free app and I'll uh, record the screen so you can uh, also see what I see right here. So uh, this is Weather and Radar. Um, yeah, it's basically an app uh, which uh, yeah, shows you also every hour uh, the situation on a specific location. Um, but the nice thing here I think is the radar. If you click on the radar, there's a load just a bit. And it shows you uh, for a couple of hours back uh, how the clouds progressed and also uh, forecasts for the coming hours how the clouds or the rain uh, will spread out. And you can do that uh, in a small, um, small time slots uh, for 15 minutes or some a bit longer for 30 minutes. And I often use this uh, on location also just to check the live images, the live satellite images. And that's what we are going to talk about now. Right before I leave uh, to the potential shooting location, uh, I often switch uh, to something what is called now casting. It's a fancy word of basically uh, you're not looking to the weather forecast anymore, but you're going to switch to uh, live satellite imagery. And so uh, I use two uh, sources for that. Uh, the first is Windy, which I al al already talked about. <laughs> and the second app I use a lot is Weather and Radar. It also has a really good live stream of uh, satellite images. And you can yeah, really just check uh, how are the clouds moving. Uh, is the potential shooting location uh, still clear? Uh, are there coming clouds my way? Uh, perhaps uh, you will have to change your plan and shoot at another location because it's just not going to happen. All right, so that's it for today. I really hope you learned something and of course I also hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the next adventure. Thank you guys for watching and see you on the next one.